comes with, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to give any spoilers if you haven't seen season two, but I think this audience has, right? Yeah. 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 After everything that Grace went through with Uncle Mac. So now she is back in the family, she's back in the church, and now is the time to either reconcile those relationships, to make it right with her family, um, and figure out exactly what her place is in ministry, if that, and it seems as though she has, she has made that choice, but not exactly figuring out you know, what, what, her, what her specific place is. But if she has decided to stay and have a season. Well, Lady Manny is nothing pretty right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, her insides, you know, how many of us know we may be pretty on the insides, but our uh, uh, in the, uh, outside, but our insides might be kind of yeah. distorted and bent and not pretty. So that's where she is, right? So the package of who she is, she's always trying to maintain that. But right now, she knows her husband. She did repeatedly, or she believes. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now there is the new young thing. Okay, which really, you know, we want to know what that makes us feel like. Right? Somebody younger, cunning, smart, there's that. Um, the grandchildren are having issues. You know, her son has left her and gone to his own church. Mm -hmm. So her, her world as she built it, wow. created it, is starting to crumble. Mm -hmm. She's in the armor that she doesn't really have control over. Mm -hmm. So she feels like she's losing control. She feels a, a low self-esteem that she can't let no one see. Mm -hmm. And absolute fear. Mm -hmm. She's terrified. But, but of course, you can never know. So the flip side of all of that is, I'm going to hold you together and I'm going to run things. Mm -hmm. But her, and I love you, really, you are with me. You have to go with me ever. <laughs> you say it, But you know, when, and when you say the year of the woman, I mean, women go through things. Mm -hmm. We all go through things. But we go through things and we have to come out on the other side and try to make our way out whole. And so right now, all the pieces are falling apart and we'll see how she gets through the season, but it's not easy. And we have no doubt that Lady May is going to find a way. That's right. That's right. That's the one thing that I look forward to watching is how, you know? And it's very interesting with the relationship with the two of you, um, your characters, and how this is evolving. It seems like everything's your fault. <laughs> 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 and, and it seems like, you know, uh, Deborah doing your character just never knows what is going on. Oh, it's it's oh, bless you. I don't understand. But you have your own interesting relationship, you know, with your ex-husband going on, and you're a new mom on the show, and you're on tour. And, What's going on with your character? There is so much happening with Charity. Um, I think in season two, when things really, really fell apart and the marriage dissolved and she had a child and when she lost a child, she had to put her face on. That's what she was taught. She had to keep going. Nobody else needs to know your business. Be strong. That's who we are as freely women. Keep going. And I think this season, um, while she thinks she may have found happiness with Tabari, the ex-husband is back in the picture. We're not sure what's going to happen with him, how he's trying to deal with their son, if she should let him, because he abandoned them. There's so much happening. She's been a single mom. Um, so how does she deal with that? How does she find her place? Should she stay back and take care of her son and not leave him with the dad? Should she give him a chance? And ultimately, she has to deal with all of that loss that she just sort of swept under the rug. Um, that's what we've been doing in this family, we haven't noticed. And so that stuff is coming up. The rug is being pulled, and we're going to have to deal with all of that grief and that hurt and, and find some healing in some way, but it's going to be a rough road.
So let me ask you, um, Ramon and Ms. Pete how is it working with so many talented and beautiful women on, on set? <laughs> oh, <laughs> inspiring. Oh, inspiring to <laughs> as we were, as we were uh, making this analogy earlier today, it's like playing the All Star game when uh, you know that everybody is uh, a star pitcher is going to throw the ball back at you. So you don't have to worry about the ball being dropped because even if it's a ground ball, somebody's going to scoop it up and get it the first before they run against it. So you know, it's a, a joy to go to work. Yeah, it really, I mean, that's why I can joke the way I just did, because they know how much I literally adore this reader and how much fun we have, how much, uh, I mean, literally, the room. It's, it's almost, I have to get in the habit of remembering to call Lynn, Lynn, as opposed to calling him, you know, Mama. Right now it's Mama Lynn. I'm like trying to find some kind of, you know, because the relationship like, is... Like, right, Mom? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Dog your hair. <laughs> He's so delicious as all well. And then oh. and these two, you know, annoying me all the time, and always picking on me, always giving me a hard time, and you know, making my days stressful. Um, and, uh, so, so you know, like the scene that we finally get a chance to see the three of us together, we get a chance to see those some of those real civic dynamics. I mean, it's, that's typically how we deal with each other on a regular basis now. So. It, it, it really is an absolute joy to not only work with these women, but really now have them uh, as a part of our lives and, and, and women that we really love and adore. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. And Kim Hawthorne, who plays my wife, Carissa. Uh, Lovey Simone, who plays Zora. Desiree Ross, that plays Sophia. Uh, and again, we've got countless other women. We've got a couple guest stars. Mm -hmm. We've got all kind of phenomenal, beautiful, brilliant women on this show, but it really starts with the three of these gems right here. And speaking of the guest stars, I know we have a lot of guest stars. Um, wow, Patti LaBelle, one of the, the guest stars, right? And we can look forward to that. But I don't think there are any pies. Uh, don't think this because uh, you get a pie, you get a pie, you get a pie. I love that guys. Can you talk about, you know, her role on the show this season? Well, you know, um, fellowship is so important amongst women, you know, that we share and we have somebody that you can go to. And if you notice, Lady May has no one. There's absolutely she doesn't have a friend on the show. Everything is, she's a worker bee, you know, and it's managing all these different areas of church and home and children, and she thinks anyway. She needs to mind her business sometimes, but she does know that. Um, and, 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 and so, she thinks. And so, she finds herself in all these dilemmas that we talked about, and, she doesn't have a friend. And um, ends up playing a character who's a television evangelist. And we went to uh, school together. I won't tell you what kind of school. But we went to school together and she seeks out a friend because she needs advice. It's the first time. She just does not know how to manage her life. And so she becomes my sounding board, my cheerleader, you know, and you see two women of a certain age just really enjoying each other's company. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It, it, it was great working with Patty, we had so much fun. When we talk about the storylines being elevated this season, uh, can each of you tease one or two things that we can look forward to? I'll start with you, Mr. Um, let me see. One of the things you can look forward to, as everybody is anticipating, what is he going to do with it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let us say, you can, you, can, you, can, you can look forward to him walking up to the door of temptation. Oh, my. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh -oh. Now, when he goes through the door, <laughs> when he goes through the door, 
And maybe the door just cracks. Okay. Oh, that was a tease, but I'm always Okay. That was a tease for something else. Uh-uh. My heart just watching, watching me. You get your pants tall and ass you over the ground. Oh, my. PTSD now. Daddy talking nasty. And you're reading your own thoughts, so I know that. Uh, I mean, take care of the father, you know, and, and trying to keep, trying to love his little boy um, differently, or at least he believes differently than the way he believes his father loves him. Uh, trying to be a father and raise a teenage daughter mm -hmm. and not strangle him. And at the same time, literally not strangle her, but also not strangle her, not hold her so tight that all, she, all you do really is push her away. So that delicate balance between, um, again, really understanding now what the pressure and responsibility really has been for this man, knowing it from a different perspective, now that he's in these real interesting positions with his own family and his, his own children and even with his own, you know, with his own wife. So it's like, oh, okay, now I get it. So that judgment that we all have, that ungrateful thing we have as children when it comes to our parents until we find ourselves in the same position in his life. Oh, so that forgiveness and that mercy we need to have and the appreciation uh, is something that Jacob is finally starting to understand. Now being the leader of this new church, it's like, oh, church as so well. that's yeah. what he's had to deal with right. that all these years. Now on top of that, his wife's trying to be the first lady and she's trying to be a mother and a wife and she's trying to make sure that this other former first lady ain't cozying up too tight, especially because her man ain't there no more. So be careful. <laughs> so it's a lot going on as well, you know, you're trying to, and that's the thing, the whole dynamic of this show and of this family, is how we're all trying to juggle all these things at the same time, hoping, you know, we don't lose sight of it all and, you know, lose a handle on it, but naturally, especially when you start handling too much stuff in this world, and how do you put it back together without uh, screwing everything up, but still maintain your relationship here at the same time. So everybody's on this journey to do better and be better, but we know we got a long way to go. So, uh, uh, you know, so it's just, Jacob's trying to work all that through. And uh, so it's just gonna be interesting to see how well he does with some things. And that's what I love about Jacob, is he always surprises you. Uh, there's always something to be proud of. There's always another way to fall in love with him. Uh, at the same time, he's still a brother trying to work it out. Well, and you know what, that, those hinges, makes his though, mistakes. the door off the hinges. How many of you have all said that too, yeah. your teenager? And I threw that in there. That wasn't scripted. So. No, there's so many things. There's so many things that naturally come through us. Yes. And, and, and that's what's great too. They allow us to, you know, some of the things that work, they just happen, you know, naturally just by all of us just kind of being in the moment with each other. I love it. And what about Carrie and his character? Um, what's your There's just a lot happening. And you. You know, with her dealing with the grief, um, you're gonna find, she finds herself lost. She finds herself lost in the grief. She finds herself lost um, with her family, like where's her place, everything is falling apart. I think that parental structure falling apart is very damaging for her. I mean, you saw her, she said, I'm gonna come from a broken home right. at 30. Um, and y'all miss me saying, what are you, 12? <laughs> I think that's very real for her and that, that has um, a huge impact on how she proceeds with dealing with everything else. And there's a rock bottom before she gets back up again. Now let me ask you, since you're since you're we still have you, um, you sang a song for the soundtrack last season and I have been told that music was not something that you planned on doing despite your family background. I mean you are on a wine can't go anywhere without them. Come on. For real though, it was from Detroit. <laughs> Detroit? Detroit. <laughs> what up? What up though? Do, do they look at you like, oh, for real, you get on TV and now you do this? Like, but, well, you know, well, you know I mean, my, my dad never pressured us to sing. And singing just was not, I didn't love it. 
My passion, my parents took us to the movies every weekend, and I would stare at that screen and just say, oh God, I can do that. Oh my God, since I was a little girl. And so that was my focus. I got my BFA in acting, my MFA in acting. That was wow. all I wanted to do. So imagine me when I get this role and they said I have to record, and I said, what do you think of Now how do I do that? Grow up and think that that's all they that's ever right. did, and that I, I had no desire, no passion. But what it showed me is, I knew I had a gift to do it, but I just didn't want to do it, and that was God saying, you need to use every gift that I've given you. Yeah. It's not for you, on it's for others. Yeah. And so now I tell people, whatever gift you have, work it all. Because in the beginning, I was, I had to, it was sink or swim, it was a challenge. And um, now I'm growing in my confidence there, but that was a very, very hard piece for me. And so while I didn't love singing or have a passion, I'm grateful that I've been able to do what I do on the show, and I give God all the glory. I'm yeah. just going to step into whatever doors he opens. I love it. Now, I know that we already spoke about Wayne May's character and the things that she's going to be going through this season. Is there anything else you wanted to add? She is going to have to you know, She looks at everybody else and tells them how she thinks they should be done. And this season, you're going to experience one of the huge things, mistakes of her life. And she has to look in the face and say, yes, I did that. And so when you find it all out, it's, really juicy and it's really um, something that families deal with often, but Lady May up and she's going to have to, <laughs> she did y'all, I mean and it's one of those ones that just doesn't go away, yeah and so she's going to have to own up to that. In your eyes right now. If I could just take a picture of you, she's like, oh, I can't wait. Yes, it's, it's bad. Almost worse than anything anybody else has done, except maybe kill my brother. That was bad. Oh, that was Just murder. Come on. Was that a tough scene to shoot? I mean, was it you know, the right oh, back? back? was physically Ooh. and emotionally, uh, even though Greg Allen is such a good friend and an extraordinary actor, it, it, uh, and so I felt safe going to the mat with him, but it was hard. I was so raw and physically broken, even though you know we had pads and all that kind of stuff. We, it was a really difficult thing to do. And it was the culmination of us you know, giving these dirty looks to each other for a good year and a half. You know, we had we had a lot to to um, there you go, a lot to unpack. <laughs> and, and unpack it we did. I I still feel I, my breath catches if I watch that scene wow. again. I I can feel those things. So. Me as well. And she did a lot of the stunt work herself. Ooh, a lot of the running and heels and. What do we expect even with Sophia and in her evolution? Well, look, Grace has got to get into people's business, right? So, um, you know, with Rochelle, uh, Grace goes after her a little bit and let, and tries to dig into that and find out what's going on. And not only does she, she try to investigate and find out and, and draw Rochelle a little bit closer, and you'll see um, she also uses it to her own purposes. I, I too much? No. 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 no, she uses it for her own purposes, and that Rochelle is connected, and, and women who have also gone through, you know, Grace likes to fight for women, um, and women who have gone through similar things that have not had the legal luck and um, resources that Grace had when she went through her, her dramatic episode, uh, that she can use this, this, woman who is coming to our, our uh, you know, into our midst, into, into our, our solar system or whatever, into our, revolves into our universe, that, that if she's going to be there, I'm going to use her resources for the greater good and also 
Uh, Grace also deals with uh, a new phase of motherhood and that her daughter is really going to wrestle with her spirituality in a very, very tough way this season. To watch your child go through that. I, I think you, we probably see some of that in the, the, the trailers that have been out, but Sophia really, really wrestles with God and, and in, in some hard subject matter. And what about her love life, Grace? Oh, I know that Rick Fox is becoming a, a, a regular, so that's pretty cool to hear that. Um, well, Grace has always had drama with love, and I think that this relationship is no different. I think she knew going into it that she was going to be in a relationship with a man who doesn't uh, believe what she believes spiritually. And at the time, because they had uh, similar uh, life goals in uncovering truth and uh, fighting for justice and, and the written word, that they seem to be on the same trajectory, but when Grace realizes, oh, I do have a call in my life. God is pulling me back. God is trying to talk to me. Then there's that dissonance that starts to happen in the relationship when he can't come along with that. So, and I think that's something that, that we women have, a lot of us women go through. You know, like, oh, he looks real cute, but he might not be in line with what God has for me. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see how that works out. He said, a mouthful there. <laughs> oh, wow. That was pretty deep. I don't know. What do you guys think? I know that we have a lot of things. So Greenleaf fans, if you have been there since the very first episode and you have, you know, been waiting and waiting and waiting, raise your hand. Let me just yeah. let me just see all my Greenleaf fans. statement about, I don't know, what we can expect as a whole for Green Season 3, let's do that. I got any popcorn, I need to sit back like, oh, it's going on. Bunch on all kinds of stuff. I know. We did this right. I mean, we were eating popcorn. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how you watch Green You supposed to True that. curl up with your friends. Yeah, that's right. This family. Every week. Yeah. Yeah. Every week. Right, popcorn and oh, wine, nice. bottle of wine. Look, oh, somebody's like, wine. Oh, Y'all already know. This family is anointed. The Greenies are anointed. And even though they're going through very human experiences, even though they are, are um, climbing up some very, very difficult mountains, um, what what I really love is that there is there is a a. Uh, individual call in all of our lives, and there is a collective call on the Greenleaf family. And um, watching us continue to look upward while we're crawling toward toward our own personal uh, healing and salvation is um, is I find there's there's great dignity and honor in, in these in these people. And and you know I didn't even talk a whole lot about uh, about the siblings and what we do when, when the, the parents start to um, it seems that they fracture. And we saw a little bit. We joked a little bit about how how we were going back and forth. Like what are we going to do about mom and daddy? Because they are they are the um, the pillars. Yes. They they taught us. They are the um, the you see so much of us in them. And and when we we have to start to pull up and, and grow up and find what our position is, what are we supposed to do, and, and we start to bond and, and connect and lift one another up in our individual ministries. Which I think is awesome. Okay, please. I was so pleased to see the sense of family on the screen that really you know, this jumps off the screen, you see the love, you see all of that. What's gonna happen this season is that within the family unit, <clears throat> we see each other in certain ways, with certain expectations, with certain, you know, presumptions. This is who they are, this is how it's going to be. But as the season goes on, you're gonna see us look at each other with all those same ideas, but start to discover new things in the people that we already know. 
and discover new things within ourselves, each of us. And for each of us, part of it has to do with becoming more humble. And in that nakedness, oh, it's like the God of the Eve. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, in the garden of Eve, you know what I mean? Like, 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 they're all innocent and everything, you know, and without shame. And then, you know, if they do something, and they sin, and they have to cover themselves. And they see themselves differently and they see all the flaws, and they see the chinks, and they see the others. So you're going to see us discover new things in ourselves and in each other this season. But, but you know, if we discover too much, then there won't be a need for another season. So, I mean, we're not trying to wrap it up as quickly as the And y'all do want there to be another season, right? Well, make sure y'all make that known. Make that known. Make that known. For me, you know what? Pray for Jacob. Um, for me, I think that everyone has their individual story and they all wrestle with this faith that they've been preaching. Their foundation is cracked. And so it's easy to talk about how good God is when things are good and how He will heal and protect and deliver and save. But then when you go through these big trials, you don't understand why. God, I've been preaching your word. Why are you making me go through this? And so they they doubt their, I know for charity, there's a doubt in that in that foundation, in that faith, and what she believes and why she believes. Um, but what I do love is that while we all have our separate situations and we may go at each other, we come together. We are still family, and we're going to find a way to get through it together. I don't even know where to start, so I'll try to keep it simple. I mean, I, again, I think one of the things that we really want to do with this show is not just have you all looking at us, but really to remind you to look at yourself. Um, and not just look at yourself, look within yourself. Don't be afraid and uh, stop being ashamed to, uh, to talk to the person that's really looking back at you. Um, you're not going to move forward and you're not going to move uh, upward and onward in your life until you really deal with the truth, until you really own your mess, okay. until you really even acknowledge your own brilliance. Many of us are doing things we really don't have any business doing. And that's because we're afraid to do what we were supposed to be doing. You better stop. stop. In the process of this whole show, um, and again, respectfully, even at their age or at their phase in life, you're going to continue to be challenged to often redefine yourself. And I don't always believe that it's redefine yourself to do something different. It's actually to pay more attention to be more like yourself. And you don't, you're never really required to do that until everything is deconstructed. Like the same and it's, it's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate because there are conversations that we should be having with ourselves so much early in our lives that we often take the time to actually do. So, uh, so I ask of you, for you, to have these conversations not only with each other and within your family and within your relationships and, and with your children and with your elders, but just importantly, if not most importantly, have that conversation with yourself and make sure that whatever that conversation is, that you are having a real conversation about what's really going on. Because then, that's really when true miracles and really pure, positive, and powerful wow, things happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. our work more than just entertainment. That's right. wow. That That's means right. that we have been serviceable yes. to our community and right. people who follow us. When you can look at us as a mirror and go back and work on things, it means that we've been in service. That's right. And that means the world to you and I know to all of us. Amen.
That's what we're doing here. We come up here to give this away. We really do. Thank you. I think it's been said. But I, mean, you know, you know, I think it also it, it takes a lot to in the in the noun and the verb sense to become yourself. Uh, we only serve as a mirror to help you become more of yourself. Uh, we, one of the lessons in life that we go through here, it's a, a sort of a, a Job-like journey that no matter what you go through, you never really veer too far away from your faith in God. Uh, you walk in, or, in, in, or no matter how far you veer away, you always come back to that deep faith in God. And you have to constantly renew that no matter what you go through and no matter how many times temptation knocks on your door. You always go back to, you know, you know, we say, what would Jesus do in this book? So, you know, keep coming back. I won't ask for what Jacob did, but we know what he would do. Well, I can't wait to see how this happens, with how this shakes out in uh, season uh, three. We have time for a couple of questions, just a couple of questions from the audience. And so, two questions. I see two hands up. So, um, you in the front row? With the hat? Oh, yes. Um, the question is, the question is, lady man, oh, why are you so hard on him and upset with him? Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. When you yourself had him. Let me tell you how much I appreciate that. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, yeah. We... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, we will be walking to the set from our trailer all the way down. Long, long corridor. And he is saying, but I don't want to stand. <laughs> Just believe that? 
Okay, let me ask you something. Uh oh, no, no, no. Here's why she gets it. That's true. This is not Lynn. This is a man. Yeah. I protect my woman. Like, a, you know, I'm not all of that. That's right. You know what I mean? Because what, here is the issue. She did that. After she found out. She acted out of pain. She acted out of So that makes it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That happened once. According to you. According to you. All right, y'all. I will see y'all later. <laughs>